Hi guys, Vertus Education here with the 26th video of the Unreal Development Kit Beginner series. And in this episode, I'm going to be continuing uh, off from where we left off in the previous video, where I introduced you to sound, I went over the difference between sound nodes and sound cues, a brief introduction to the sound cue editor, we also imported a sound, and we looked at a whole bunch of other stuff. And also, if you have a look at my scene, BOOM! The whole thing has changed pretty cool and it's definitely going to be great for the purposes that we're going to be using for this video so in the last video we did uh, in fact import our own custom sound and we begin to create our very first sound cue that we have here I've deleted it just so I can do a quick recap here so you know exactly how to create a new sound cue so I'm just gonna go ahead and right click anywhere where where there's space free here and we're gonna press new sound cue and I'm just gonna name this test sound cue at uh, seeing uh, it's you know the names appropriate considering the previous one's test sound anyway so inside of the uh the sound cue editor you have this well this is essentially the sound cue editor i want to put that off the bat here uh from the very start so this is the sound cue editor so we've got quite a few things here that we can play around with so i'm just going to give you a quick introduction to uh the sort of interface because i haven't necessarily done that yet so firstly you have your properties down here at the bottom as you usually do in unreal uh stuff also this is very similar to other other visual scripting interfaces that you have inside a udk for example you have uh the material editor you have kismet and so on and this works just the same in the sense that you can drag and you can drag nodes and connect them up to each other and so on also the rest of the stuff is you have this little menu strip you can go into properties edit cut copy paste pretty simple up here you have your controls for playing back the stuff so for example you have uh, your stop here you have play selected node which means you'll only play a uh, just one and this one will then play the whole thing so enough of this jibber jabber i'm gonna bring this uh sound node into here and uh get this thing going so let's start off by just going ahead and pressing paste with this selected and it'll bring it in or just uh okay maybe paste doesn't work but a uh, sound node wave test sound here will work and we can bring it in and uh there we go we pretty much made our very first testing testing one two three. and yeah we pretty much made our very first sound cue however this isn't necessarily all we're going to be doing there's a lot more complexity and uh room for improvement and stuff we can actually do inside of the sound cue editor so i'm going to quickly bring this back in again because they don't allow me to un uh, unlink stuff but uh there we go so Let's have have a look at some of the nodes we actually have uh, available to us. So keep in mind, I'm not necessarily going to be able to go over each and every single one of these because some of these are newly added since when I first learned UDK years and years ago. But I know the majority of them, and I'm going and I'm going to be trying to explain this to you to the best of my ability. So to start off from the top here. You have uh, attenuation. I briefly explained this. It allows you to sort of position your sound in 3D space and control the fall off you have I'm not too sure about attenuation and gain uh, concatenator this essentially allows you to go from um, allow you to go from one to another so for example if we have input volume we can essentially just let's say we hook this up we can then control the volume for one and then a second node here using the settings that we have available to us and you know by default it's set to one uh... we're not necessarily going to be using that for now but let's move on to the next thing so the next thing we have a, is a delay pretty simple really everyone knows what a delay is it essentially allows you have it uh, allows you to have a gap between uh, a sequence of events so from for example if we were to hook it up like this and then click the delay here and set the delay minimum and maximum to two the delay is going to be two seconds so if I go ahead and press play now you will see there's a gap of two seconds exactly between the time the test sound is uh, played and when I actually press the play button so let's just quickly do this and you should be able to hear it one two testing testing one two three and there we go it worked pretty much exactly how we wanted it to and uh, yeah so next thing here is distance crossfade this essentially allows you to change the fade between two different sound nodes based on the distance of the player I haven't actually done too much with this so I'm not really going to go into it too much the next one we have is looping well 
Some of you may be familiar with looping when you're watching and playing videos and so on. You can essentially make a video or a sound, in this case a sound, play back over and over and over again. This is really great for ambient sounds. For example, I've got some birds flying around in my scene here. You might want to hear them, you know, their bird noises, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know, I'm not going to try and make a bird noise. But anyway, you know, you'd want to loop that so it's continuous because you don't want it to stop. So, for example, this, this just plays once and then stops. So yeah, this plays once and then stops. Whereas this, we can use it to allow something to loop and we can do this either indefinitely so it keeps in play and keeps on playing forever or we can also use a loop count so it can play let's say five times or ten times depending on how many times you want it to play because you don't necessarily want something to loop all the time but maybe just enough times for the player to do something or uh, another sound to be played or to move on to the next section of uh, sound and so on so the next one is a sound node mature you probably won't be using this but this is to allow unreal development kit to know the sound you're going to be playing is mature for example you would use this to let uh to let the system know that uh you know there's profanity or sexual references or you know anything along those lines i think that's what it's used for anyway i i'm, I'm probably uh, mistaken but anyway so let's move on to the next thing the next thing is a mixer this essentially allows us to uh, play two things at once so for example you might have your looped ambient sound like the for example let's say if you had a generator you would have the humming and then you might also have some uh, clanks and plugs and you know machinery going on as well so that's kind of what we can do a mix what we can do with a mixer i'll try to use that in a little bit so let's go on and move on to the next thing which is a modulator so i think i might have um i might have somewhat touched on this but this essentially allows us to make our sounds modular in the sense that we will have a random uh pitch and volume so you can see here if i hook this up i can actually change this this so it's uh, changed my sound so it comes out randomly uh, in terms of the pitch and volume. So I'm going to set the minimum pi uh, the minimum volume to 0 0.3, and I'm going to leave the volume maximum where it is. So if I keep playing this now, we're going to get a random volume and pitch every single time, and you should be able to hear this. So just listen carefully. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, and, one, two, three. and you can see there that it isn't necessarily always the same volume. It very it varied, so we can essentially have our sounds being modular. We can also get the same sort of thing with a um uh with a random. Also with the uh continuous modulator, you can essentially just make that make that modulation continuous. I'm not necessarily going to be going over that. You also have the um the oscillator I'm not necessarily going to be going over that uh, we also have the random so this can be used to make the uh, sound cue play a random uh, sound node wave so for example if I had a sound wave saying one another one saying two three four it would then play a random one uh, out of that so we can actually add more inputs so we can have as many inputs as we want so I'm gonna see if I can find a sound cue uh, not, sorry not sound cue sorry um, something that I can another sound that I can use to make this random here so I'm gonna see what I can find I'm gonna go to all types and I'm gonna go all the way down and look for a sound wave node so I'm gonna have this one in here sorry let's drag it in uh, there we go and I'm gonna hook this up I'm gonna delete this and we'll delete this into the second one and then we're going to hook this up and every time I play it hopefully it should play a random uh, track out that whether it's t me saying testing testing one two three or it's the uh, the bio rifle impact so let's quickly test this and you'll see what it does testing testing one two three Testing, testing, and you can one, see that, and you can see there that it's pretty much random and works just how we want it. You might want to do this if you want to get an uh, an extra sense of modularity. For example, let's say you had a player jumping into some water, you wouldn't necessarily want it to be the same splash sound every time. You're going to want that to change, or a footstep. You might want it to change uh, based on something, but you know, 
Anyway, this is essentially what random does. It allows you to randomize the sound node wave that's being played. And lastly, we have the sound node wave parameter. This essentially allows us to control our sound uh, from Kismet or Matinee, which is pretty cool. But we're not really going to be using that uh, just yet, seeing as it's one of the more advanced features. Uh, so. It's pretty much everything I want to go over in terms of the different nodes that we have here. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can create a uh, a few different sounds that we can play around with here. So firstly, I'm going to be using a mixer. I'm going to be using this to combine two soundtracks. Uh, and I'm also going to be using a, a modulator to, uh, not a modulator, sorry, an attenuator to put it in 3D space. This mixer is going to be used to create a sort of humming, uh, a humming, um, uh, god damn it, yeah, a, a humming generator, sorry, w along with it saying testing, testing, one, two, three, and it's kind of being looped because it's broken. So let's just go ahead and hook this up. So, what was I doing? Okay, so, attenuator. We always want to start off with our attenuator at the first, and any effects you might want to apply to the whole sequence. You can obviously apply this to a single sequence, but just for the sake of this, I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to attenuate the whole thing as opposed to a single bit. So, let's just go ahead and do this, and next I'm going to hook up the mixer, that's saying this is the next sequence, so I can then hook up two sounds to this. So, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can find a generator hum or something like this. Okay, so that sounds uh, pretty much like what we want, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this in now. And you can see that it's going to be combining the two. And now I might want to be playing around with this a little bit more, because I feel that the... Um, the uh, the machine generator sound that we have here is just a little bit too loud, so I'm going to be using a um, uh... okay, yeah. So I'm going to be using the mixer here to change the volume of input one. Uh, this one here being zero, input zero, this one being input one. So let's go ahead and click this, and I'm going to change this down to zero point three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And there we go, you can see it keeps on playing. However, another bug has, ar uh, has arised here in the form, in the sense that this machine generator here is actually being looped, whereas this test sound isn't actually being looped. So let me play that again. Testing one, two, three. So what we need to do is go ahead and add a loop node to this, so it'll actually loop. So what we need to do here is just essentially hook that up, and it will now loop indefinitely, providing that this little option is checked. So let's go ahead and press testing, play sound cue. One, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, and two, then three. you can see that, um, you know, this one here isn't being looped either. So what we need to do is, uh, I'm going to delete that, I'm going to delete that, I'm going to add in the loop before the mixer so it uh, so it loops everything uh before the, the everything that's hooked up to the mixer so let's go ahead and do this and hook that up and hook that up and now everything should be loop uh, should be looped and it should work exactly how we want it to testing testing one two three testing testing one two three and there we go, and it testing, works pretty testing, well. One, and I'm going to be using this for the generator that I have, so that it, uh, you know, it says testing, testing, one, two, three, because it's partially broken, and also it's going to uh, have that sort of generator hum that I don't have at the moment. Because if I go into here, I press play, it will sound like there's just fire, and you can't really hear the generator at all. And you know, really, a generator should be running, it should be making plenty of noise, especially uh, something of this size especially one that's uh, malfunctioning at that. So let's go ahead and see if I can find that sound cue of mine, which I have somewhere. Oh god, where did I play? Okay, here it is. So now I can drag this in. I'm going to press G so I can see those spheres that I created here. And you can see those spheres are huge. Uh, so I haven't actually played around with the attenuation yet, but we can see some basic stuff in terms of uh, how it's going to be working. So I'm just going to quickly go to this. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go back to my attenuator, and I'm going to change this so the uh, minimum and maximum has been played with. So I'm going to set this to 800, and then I'm going to delete the sound, uh, the ambient sound I have here, and I'm going to drag it back in, and this should be a, mo a little more appropriate. So let's go ahead and press play, and uh, 
jump into this. So firstly, you should be able to hear the fire just a little bit, but you can also hear that testing, generator testing, alongside one, two, my voice saying testing, testing, one, two, three, which is kind of ugh, irritating. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much everything for this tutorial. I really do advise that you play around with the sound editor as much as you like, play around with some of the nodes that I haven't covered, the nodes that I have covered too, and uh, see what you can do and try to get that level of atmosphere that we that you don't necessarily have yet. Because just visuals, even visuals uh, like this that look amazing, you know, aren't going to get you the full atmosphere that you're actually looking for inside of your stuff. So, you know, see what you can do with the UD UDK imported, uh, UDK provided sounds, spice up your level, even try import your own if, you know, you're a sound guy or, you know, you just feel like having a bit of fun. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.